Hello everyone, my name is Keith, and in this video we're going over my top 6 Mavic Air 2 camera tips and tricks. After flying the Mavic Air 2 for a while now, I decided to write these things down on my phone while I was out and realized that I had way too much to just make one video about the Mavic Air 2. So I broke them into two different parts. The first part has more to do with the camera, while the second part has more to do with the app and other small miscellaneous tips and tricks. This is part of my Mavic Air 2 course that includes getting started videos, printable pre-flight checklist, and a creative LUT pack. You can enroll for free using the link below in the description. Getting straight into it, my first tip for the Mavic Air 2 is to shoot 4K 60 frames per second and 1080p 240 frames per second. The 4K 60 was something I had to fly my bigger Phantom 4 Pro to previously get, and even better, a feature my bigger drone doesn't have is the 240 frames per second at 1080p. The 4K footage from this camera is very crisp. If you're editing 4K in a 1080p timeline, you'll have the ability to crop in on the footage in post, in zoom, in pan, or whatever you need, and it will still look really, really good. The 60 frames per second allows you to slow down your video while taking advantage of that 4K resolution. The 1080p, however, is pretty grainy and aliased if you're not shooting in ideal lighting conditions. Shooting in slow motion is typically reserved for special situations anyway, like capturing action or something you want to freeze in the frame. So shooting 240 is really going to be a specialized thing. I think it could use a little bit of a bump in bitrate when it comes to having the footage look a little bit more crisp. That being said, it is nice to have the ability to shoot 240 because I would only really shoot it on bright days in special circumstances anyways. Adding higher ISO with the 1080p 240 is a recipe for really grainy footage. My second tip for the Mavic Air 2 is to know when to use HDR video and when to shoot regular video. The Mavic Air 2 HDR video uh, is something that you might just be tempted to shoot in all the time. But in my findings, the HDR video is best suited for high contrast situations that have bright highlights and dark shadows. So if you're shooting in an HDR mode, that's what you want to preserve in the first place. Another reason you would want to film here is if you immediately want to post your footage online without any editing. Keep in mind that at the time of this recording, the HDR video is in auto mode, meaning you can't adjust the shutter, ISO, or anything like that. You can adjust the exposure value, but the settings are automatically chosen for you. The brilliant colors of the HDR mode is pretty great, but if you're like me, you want to color grade your footage and get a certain look. You'll want to film with regular video and select the right color profile and camera settings and then color grade your footage and post yourself. Of course, this is more work, but you'll get an overall better final image. Which brings me to my next tip. My third tip for the Mavic Air 2 is to use the proper picture profile if you want to color grade. Using a picture profile will allow you to drastically improve your post-production experience. If you want to color grade your footage, stick to one profile so you don't have to try to match HDR, normal, and cine-like footage all together, which would be really tough. Like I said in the previous tip, if you're just posting to Instagram without any editing, using the normal profile with manual settings or the auto HDR mode will get you the best results out of your drone, but if you're shooting in a normal mode, using Cinelike and manual camera settings will allow you to color grade your footage and get really good results. The nice part about Cinelike is that it's a not a completely desaturated log profile. It kind of feels like a hybrid between normal and log. It's easier to color grade, but you still have more room to edit with. Speaking of hybrid, this camera does not have HLG or hybrid log gamma. Hopefully it's just DJI saving this for the pro versions of the Mavics. If you've stuck around my channel for a while, you'll know I'm a big HLG fan. I would love if DJI added HLG to the Mavic Air 2 with a firmware update, but I'm not gonna hold my breath. Something tells me that those more professional picture profiles are reserved for the more professional drones. My fourth tip for the Mavic Air 2 is to use the focus track modes. The focus track is a great step forward in flying and tracking moving or stationary objects. As of right now, focus track consists of active track 3.0, 
Point of Interest 3.0 and Spotlight 2.0. But my parents and I were out fishing one night and I was manually flying behind the boat. And at first I was kind of hesitant to put it into focus track, but I just decided to enable it and see how easy it was for the Mavic Air 2 to keep up with the boat. And I was blown away at first how easy it was to initiate and how well the Mavic Air 2 did flying behind the boat, even flying into a headwind. Focus track with sport mode enabled was able to keep up with the boat traveling 15, 20 miles an hour. And there were winds about five miles an hour. And if you got up higher, there were gusts of 10 to 15 miles per hour over the water. I was able to fly far away and come closer to the boat with ease and the drone kept the boat in the position the whole time. This mode takes some getting used to and you need to be mindful of flying because you can produce kind of jerky motion if you're not careful. This isn't a completely autonomous cinematic flight mode, but it's pretty dang close. Another drawback to these modes is that they're not available in 4K 60 or 1080p 240. For higher frame rates, you'll need to switch into manual mode, which you should be able to do and fly your drone and get all of these same shots. It just might be a little bit more difficult and time consuming. My fifth tip for the Mavic Air 2 is to shoot 48 megapixel stills and always shoot in RAW plus JPEG. In my findings, the 48 megapixel stills blew the 12 megapixel stills out of the water. If you're shooting with only a quarter of the sensor with the 12 megapixel stills, obviously they're not gonna be as good as utilizing the whole sensor like the 48 megapixel stills do. Be mindful of your shooting modes, however, because some shooting modes won't let you shoot in 48 megapixel stills, like smart photo. But if you're shooting a single photo, shoot in the 48 megapixel option. Also, shooting JPEG in RAW will always give you the most room to work with the image when it comes to post-production. You should always be shooting in JPEG plus RAW with every camera. My next tip for the Mavic Air 2 is to explore the FPV mode. I have an entire video coming out about FPV mode on the Mavic Air 2, but FPV mode allows your gimbal to follow the movement of your drone. The default mode for the Mavic Air 2 is follow mode. This is the normal mode we've all come adjusted to with DJI drones. Follow mode keeps the horizon straight and level regardless of how your drone is flying. Once you put your drone into FPV mode, the camera will follow the pitch of your drone, which allows you to get some pretty interesting angles and you just can't frankly get them in follow mode. Again, I'll have a video about this soon. I'll link it above if it's out already. If not, subscribe and hit the bell notification with all selected to get updated when I do post that video. So those are my top six Mavic Air 2 tips and tricks for getting the most out of your camera. I tried to narrow this list down but as I was writing it, I knew I had to break it up into multiple parts. The next video will be the Mavic Air 2 app and tips and tricks within the app, as well as some just rapid fire miscellaneous tips. If you're interested in my free Mavic Air 2 course, LUT pack, and pre-flight checklist, check out the link in the description for more information. Leave this video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new here. I make a lot of drone tips, tutorials, and reviews. So if you like those kind of videos, you'll probably like all of the other videos on my channel. So thank you guys for sticking around and I'll see you in the next one.